Hey guys, it's Dani. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about pest preference when it comes to orchids. I did this video a few weeks ago, but it was short and shorts don't really go well on this channel. So many of you actually missed or skipped that video. So we're going to redo it in proper video form. So what we're seeing here are my catacetum type orchids here and my zygopetalums here. I keep them in this rootstock cabinet in the hopes that they will be a little bit more protected from pests and well, <laughs> pests sometimes do find the way. But what is interesting to see is that while the catacetums look horrifying and trust me they have been grazed upon so so badly, the zygopetalum look pretty fresh and this is because the pests, in this case thrips, actually prefer catacetum leaves to zygopetalum leaves. And this has to do with many things that probably I don't understand because I'm not an insect. <laughs> yeah, Maya, that was a good one. But I suspect it has to do with the fact that catacetums have a lot thinner leaves. The cuticle is really not that thick. The cuticle being the waxy layer protecting the leaf. And who knows, maybe the taste is better with catacetum orchids as well. While with the zygopetalums, I don't see much interest in them, even though they're sitting side by side, as you can see. Pests can definitely jump over. Now, I've complained about catacetums and pests in the past as well, and this was a sort of last attempt to grow these plants without issues. I don't think they are the plants for me <laughs> in this climate or in this particular location, so I kind of stopped buying them. Not because they don't grow well, but because I have major pest issues. Wherever I put them, the pests find them. And since I'm not really a fan of toxic insecticides, I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. However, this is such an interesting example, if I can call it like that, of how pests actually choose the types of orchids that they want to feed on. Now, if I didn't have the catacetums, if in my grow room I only had the zygopetalums, trust me, the pests would attack the zygopetalum and say thank you, and not mind the fact that the leaves of the zygos are a little thicker. Because guess what? In comparison to zygopetalums, catleas, let me get you a little orchid, Catleas have even thicker leaves. So imagine in this cabinet, I didn't have catacetums and zygos, I had catleas and zygos. Well, I think you can deduct that the zygos would have been the thing on top of the menu and not the catleas. But in this instance, it happens to be the other way around. Another plant pests seem to prefer, Sally, is my Cymbidiella, which is one of those plants I don't always find for sale and I really, really like it. Sadly, the moment I put it in the grow space, not in a cabinet, but on a shelf, it got thrips like the second day and it got super infested with them. It looks horrible and I have been treating it with my leaf shine pretty often, but the thing is the leaf shine has mineral oil, which is a very light type of oil. The way that I use it is very safe, but it also evaporates really fast. So the effects don't last as long, especially on this plant. So ever since I purchased this plant, I only have pest issues, no matter how much attention I give it, no matter that I separated it now, it's just not working out and she looks horrible. Again, I'm thinking maybe the leaves are yummy or the cuticle is easy to break through. I don't know what it is, but it's a pissed magnet and it's getting me so, so frustrated and sad because I love this orchid. So what I did was I actually used a, an insecticide on this plant. It is the only plant that I have insecticide on and it's not even an insecticide for plants. It's something for ants or something, which apparently works on this guy as well with very low toxicity. It's called BioKill. So I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but I am at the limit of my tolerance with pests on this plant. I'm willing to do anything, but she's the only plant I have sprayed and I do not intend to spray others because now I cannot even touch it. I have to put it in a cabinet so the birds don't reach it. It's not ideal, it's not what I want, but I do really want this plant and it's the only way that I know how to cope with it. So we'll see how it goes, but yeah, it's, I think it's worse than the catacetums, the cymbidiella, and I don't know why but the pests have a very, very clear bias towards this plant. Now, let me show you a group of plants. I rarely have issues with pests and thrips generally, and these are the catleas across the board generally. Now, it's not that I never have pests on them, but they're very limited, and I'll tell you what they're limited to. First of all, the sheath. I do not focus, right? <laughs> okay, so this sheath. 
this is very very thin so pests really do like this formation also the sheath that forms around the pseudobulb while it's green when it's dry it's dead so they're not interested but while it forms let's say it's like this in this stage they love this sheath let me show you an orchid with damage Alrighty, that one there can you see grazing on this sheath and well the grazing has stopped and I was able to control it anyway with my leaf shine but it doesn't last and it's not abundant because at some point that sheath will dry out as it normally should so the pests are not interested anymore in it but definitely on cattleyas they do like that sheath and this formation but being that that's not really their favorite food, they kind of just land here and well, since they're there, they're gonna graze upon it. And since cattleyas don't have any other yummy parts to them, apparently it's really easy to contain an outbreak on a cattleya. Other than that, cattleyas really do not attract much pests for me, especially thrips, because they have pretty thick leaves. This is my suspicion at least. The leaves have a very thick waxy cuticle and considering the fact that they're very tolerant to drought, it makes sense. Usually these types of plants, which come from very arid places naturally and they have specialized in resisting drought and low quantities of water, I find in my collection that they are the least prone to pests. Even vandas. I don't know if I ever had to treat a vanda or spray vanda, <laughs> really, because they, they just don't get the pests. However, other stuff with very thin leaves, oh boy, it is a magnet. So on one side, it is quite interesting and fascinating how pests work as well. But on the other side, it gives me headaches. <laughs> Hence why cattleyas and a few others, which are drought tolerant and resistant to pets, have become my favorite orchids to keep. And the other ones, which I still like, I'm trying to limit the numbers that I purchase because I know they will be a headache long term. With all the layers of protection I can offer, they're still not cattleyas or tulumnias. Tulumnias don't really have issues either. I don't think I ever sprayed a tulumnia for something. So yeah, such is life. What to do? We can't grow all our kids, right? So what have been the most pest resistant orchids in your collection? Let me know in a comment below. For me, it's everything drought tolerant pretty much. I don't know if there are exceptions, maybe. Oh, there definitely are exceptions, I realized after I filmed, and it's worth mentioning. Phalaenopsis orchids, generally very drought tolerant, both polychylus and the typical flower shop ones. Well, they are pretty prone to pests, and not only that, spider mites can actually transfer the orchid fleck virus in between Phalaenopsis orchids. And that's a virus I didn't have much issues with with other genera of orchids, mainly with Phalaenopsis. So definitely these guys are on the menu and also dendrobiums. Think about the dendrobium phalaenopsis type, which has nothing to do with the phalaenopsis, it's just the name. But that guy is very, very, very drought tolerant. The most drought tolerant plant that I have, also a pissed magnet. While with the phalaenopsis, if they have an option, they will go for something else. But the dendrobium, oh no, that's the top of their menu. And yeah, that's a very drought tolerant plant. So no, forget about the statistic that I did earlier. I think it just so happened that many of the plants that are drought tolerant have a very thick cuticle, but maybe it also has to do with taste. If something tastes very, very good, never mind the cuticle, I guess, I, I don't know. Or maybe the adaptation to drought is different. It doesn't really consist of a thick cuticle because now thinking about it, Maybe the dendrobiums do have a thin cuticle. Anyway, just so you know, dendrobiums are pest magnets. In comparison to cattleyas and vandas, oh boy, they are sadly target number one. I'm curious to know about you guys in other environments. Righty then, so with that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!